Reisdorf sends a man in motion again. That's Brewer. Reisdorf looking to pass. Rolling right. Rolling right. Has time. Now throws on the run to the far side. Oh, and cannot come up with it. Quentin Clark. Excuse me, I had him on the wrong side of the field. Clark can't. High school football on ITOC 1067 and Sholo TV Channel 56. Presented by Hatch Motor Company and Snowflake and Sholo. Hatch Motor Company, simply the best in service and sales. Produced by White Mountain Youth Productions in cooperation with Sholo TV and ITOC 1067 Radio. It's time, slips a tackle at the 35. It's Miles, going to try to get the outside. He makes a move there. Oh, looking left side, falls wide open, caught at the bar, touchdown. The High School Football is also brought to you in part by Black Diamond Auto Glass, Northland Pioneer College, Ace Hardware of the White Mountains, Sunrise Park Resort, Honda Resort Casino, Horn Auto Center, and Beeler Orthodontics. And now, Hatch Motor Company and Snowflake and Shola presents High School Football. Turnover to Havasu, that time White able to hang on to it and uh, knocks off the first down gain. Jake Means, the safety for Havasu, having to come up and just make a shoestring tackle on Wyatt. Want to thank our viewers online at italk1067.com for their patience as we are now streaming live video feed. So welcome in those viewers. Our score 14 to 7 in favor of Lake Havasu. Cougars trying to answer. Trips right. Take the snap. Reisdorf looking to throw. Looking to throw. Has lots of time. Throws it. And Clark can't quite come up with it. Thrown far to the outside. And there is a penalty on the play. So the incompletion will stop the clock. But we'll check the flag. I believe this one's going to go against Sholo. The penalty is on the offense for procedure. Coach Reisdorf uh, asking the referee here. I'm not sure if he's asking for a timeout or if he wants to talk to the to the head referee about that penalty. I'm not sure. But regardless, I think one of the things he may be upset about is there's been a lot of penalty flags. Well, not both sides, really. Both sides. Take a procedure on the offense. We will repeat first down with the five yard penalty. So I think he's wanting to find out what caused that penalty because obviously Coach Reisdorf feels that they were set correctly. So yeah, Coach Reisdorf out in, inside the numbers trying to plead his case about the formation. And obviously this is a crew that's not real familiar with uh, the Cougars. And th th these teams have combined for eight penalties. Have a scoring update for you uh, in Round Valley. They're taking on Tempe Prep and currently down seven to six, but that one's a close one. And we have an update from the one versus eight game in the Division Four playoffs. Uh, Yuma Catholic trails Northwest Christian 7-0 early going of that one as well. And now we now have another update. Northwest Christian has extended their lead 13-0 over Yuma Catholic. That number one seed could fall tonight. And if... Uh, well, you know, both of those schools, perennial powers at the lower division in prior years, uh, Yuma Catholic, I think, winning the Coach. state championship over the last couple years at least. But uh, a great head-to-head -head competition there clearly tonight between those two teams. Coach Reisdorf clearly not happy about the decision of the officials to call that procedure penalty against him as Cougars face a first down and 15. Ball spotted at their own 41-yard line. As they break the huddle, Clark and Fagotti split out wide to the near side, want two receivers left. Brewer goes in motion, Reisdorf looking to pass. Rolling right, throws it on the, the quick flip to, to Brewer, and Brewer, usually such sure hands, Jace Brewer cannot haul that one in, it falls incomplete. And you, as you say, Mike, you can't fall the passing of little bit of room he ran the short route after the deeper receivers cleared out the linebackers and corners so Brewer had room to run it, it, you know I don't know if he would have been able to get to a first down since it's like uh, second and maybe 15 right now but he definitely had a lane to be able to get up the sideline so it is second down and 15 ball on the left hash trips right one left 
Reisdorf again looking to roll right, looking, looking. Here comes the pressure. He throws it and he just threw that one away. Clark again trying to, they're trying to get Clark on that comeback route. Steven Kornowski, Kornowski on the coverage. But the pressure being put on by Chad Blanton, I believe. Yeah, well, I think that's one of the keys here for Havasu. You know, even though Reisdorf is rolling out, he's having to do so at high speed. And I'm not sure if he's used to running that fast and throwing at the same time. You know, we've seen him roll out this year, but he's usually able to set he, his he feet a little settle, bit yeah. better. On that one, he was just running for his life. The speed of that defensive front for Havasu is certainly impressive. And, of course, with their linebackers and their aggressive pursuit angles makes it even doubly tough for uh, Reisdorf to just set up and throw the long ball like he's used to be able to do. So third down and 15, timeout on the field. We will take it with them. Black timeout glass says with 7.48 to go, Cougars trail 7-14. to 14. You're listening to Hatch Motor Company's presentation of high school football on iTalk 106.7 and on the web at italk1067.com. Joshua Beeler has been providing family-friendly orthodontics in Sholo and the entire White Mountains since 2006. If you need braces, stop in and see the friendly folks at Beeler Orthodontics and meet their professional staff. Dr. Beeler and his team have the latest in orthodontics technology, and they work with each patient individually to custom-tailor the most effective treatment plan for the best results. Beeler Orthodontics is a proud sponsor of high school sports. Beeler Orthodontics. Live to smile. Love your smile. Welcome back to Sholo High School, Hatch Motor Company's presentation of high school football on iTalk 106.7 and now online at italk1067.com as the Cougars facing a third and 15 situation in their, in their own territory, 41-yard line. Reistorf now changes the place and four receivers to the right, two to the left. Reistorf on an island out there in the backfield. He now... Brings Willie Wyatt towards the formation in motion. Take the snap. Get some blocking. Here comes the pressure. Throws on the run, and it is complete on the sideline. Looks complete. It's Fagoti, but he's going to be shy of the first down. But a good 11-yard pickup. Well, you know, Mason Fagoti goes deep enough on his deep route running down the field, but then when he comes back, as you say, Mike, he comes back to get that football. It's going to... Even though he makes the reception on the sideline, it's going to leave him a couple of yards short here. For, so it'll be fourth and two. Well, the Cougars on their last fourth, fourth down attempt did not make it. We'll see if they do so if they go for it here on fourth and three. They're short a player. As Amoto is going to have to come in and line up to the ball game late. And uh, we'll see if they hand it off to Willie Wyatt. Reisdorf has three men in the backfield. Amoto is the deep man. Take the snap. Fake it to Amoto. They're going deep to Quinton Clark. Throw it up in the air. And all kinds of pass oh, interference. All kinds of, <laughs> but, all kinds of contact there. Number 12, Stephen Konoski, the, the center fielder, the safety. Well, he saves a touchdown. He does do that, certainly. And, and if he, if he would have known better, he had good coverage. If he would have just turned around and looked for the ball. We, they uh, they might have he might have been able to do something a little different. Angel Moreno comes up limping for the Cougars, offensive lineman, but the 15-yard penalty will give the Cougars a first down. Their sixth penalty for 55 yards. We had a defensive pass interference call for face guarding that will give it a first down. First down and the 15-yard penalty puts the ball into night territory at the 32-yard line. Cougars have it first and 10. Lots of time left. So we're having a little uh, uniform change. Something's going on down there on the uh, they're, they're having sideline. A, I think they're, they're changing swap numbers. Out uniforms, yeah. On first down, Reisdorf wants to throw, throws to nobody. Pass perhaps intended for Brewer, but well covered. Reisdorf just threw it away. And so after the incompletion, it'll be second down and 10. You know, it's interesting, Mike, when you look at the solo offense, you know, the run-pass ratio way lopsided, at least in these last couple of possessions. Solo passing the ball almost on every play, it seems like, with only a, a you know, a, 
a run play just scattered in here and there. Well, I believe it's uh, Jacob Mills is who's changing out plays as Willie Wyatt, oh, give, and he puts loose. the ball down again, and Lake Havasu has the ball. Calgonis, who's done a lot for the <laughs> Knights so far tonight, he comes up with the fumble recovery, and uh, the Cougars, things not bouncing their way here in the first half. And that's the second turnover tonight by a fumble, and both of them, unfortunately, Willie Wyatt just trying to, you know, the first was that wraparound handoff. He just never cl cleanly picked up the handoff on that one. This one looked like contact right at the line of scrimmage from one of those linebackers or defensive linemen able to knock the ball loose and turn the ball over. So another drive killer turnover here for the Cougars. Clock has not run much in the last few minutes. Receiver to the right. High backs behind him, pitch to Calgonis. Calgonis going to be dropped for one of the few times in the backfield. Right there leading the way. Looks like uh, Willie Wyatt. Yeah, Willie Wyatt. Along with Levi filling him. Yeah, the combination of Wyatt and Fillingham just setting the edge that time and extending out the, pushing the runner to the sideline. And then, and, you know, they end up making the tackle before he hits the sideline. So much better defensive presence that time by the Cougars on that quick pitch. And we've got another, another penalty against Lake Havasu as they'll sort this out with Sholo to see what they want to do. There's a loss of three, excuse me, a loss of five. No, they got back to the line of scrimmage. Oh, they just haven't put the spot in the right yeah, place. Yeah, they haven't moved the... Yeah, he lost three on the play, but they may decide they want to take that or they and, and keep it second down. So they're, they're going to call a holding penalty here on the Knights, the Lake Havasu Knights, and I think that's their seventh penalty. Seventh penalty of the night, and from the spot of the foul. And so we'll repeat second down after the 10 yard line. So even though Lake Havasu up in this football game with a one touchdown lead, 14 7, they themselves have been struggling, and, and they've been able to get turnovers that have allowed them to possess the ball, but they've had a. A ton of turnovers on the offensive side. So Warner will go into the shotgun on second down and 20. Uh, we'll call it 19. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Take the snap, looking to throw, going deep up over the top. And right there, back there's oh. Cody, and he can't quite come up with the pick. Intended for Teddy Goslin again, but Warner just threw that one up for grabs. Fagodi, great coverage on the play. Well, he put a lot of air under it in addition and allowing Fagodi at that corner position to outrun the receiver and put himself in much better position to receive it, but still very long pass that time. So the Cougars have had the answer defensively against the Knights on their last couple possessions as the Knights now have a third down and long. And on their last possession, they went backwards a long ways. Trips right, two receivers left. Empty backfield for Warner. Shotgun snap. Takes it. Give fake to, to the end on the end around. Looking to pass. Here comes the pressure, and he's dropped. Sacked on the play. Coming from either side was Wyatt. And, and Moreno. Moreno. Number 52 also coming up from that defensive front. But uh, good pressure that time by the Cougars Willie at a Wyatt critical time. Is, comes up limping. So leaving Havasu deep in their own field about the what the 14 it looks like fourth and 20 something. Crabtree so will. Uh, I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. No, I was say Crabtree will now stand in at his goal line and punt this one away. There it is. It's a good spiral punt. Quinton Clark being driven back takes it at his 42 yard line. There's a block as Clark tries to pick his way through traffic. Spins at the 50. And brought down at the 45-yard line. So good return of 15 yards. And the Cougars will have it about not quite where they fumbled their last possession, but a good field position nonetheless. They're going to say at the 44. Well, that's I 49 to go. You know, Solo cannot complain at all about the field position, the starting field position, especially they've been able to generate so far in these in this first half. And they haven't let their two turnovers hurt them. Yeah, and, and that's another big key for them. They've dodged the bullet in that respect, certainly. Cougar send trips left, two receivers to the right. Reisdorf in the shotgun by himself. 
looks to throw over the middle, has a man, it's Quinton Clark at the 35, the 30, spun down at the 29-yard line. A Horn Auto Center pick up, uh, a Horn Auto Center first down and a pickup of 16. Jacob Calganas, you know, we talked a lot about him on the offensive side. He's also a safety on their defense, and he comes up with a tackle on uh, Clark, but af not after Sholo getting a big gain. So again, Sholo able to move the ball here. The key for them is to avoid the penalties and certainly avoid the turnovers. Same formation for the Cougars. Reisdorf sends Brewer in motion. Take the snap, rolling left. Throwing left to Brewer in the flats at the 25, tackled immediately. And on the tackle for the Knights is Cole Meals. But a pickup of four on the play. We'll call it three, second down and seven. And that's a 6'3", 195 pound Cole Meals coming, taking a great angle. Um, he's, he's a quick linebacker for these uh, Knights, doing a good job for them defensively. Quinn and Clark didn't even make it to the huddle as he stays wide out here to the trip side. Two receivers left. Ball's on the far hash. Reisdorf sends a moto in motion, give to him, and he's going to be hit at the line of scrimmage and dropped immediately at the 35-yard line. Sorry, 25-yard line. That's 42 for... Uh, Scooble. Lake Havistu, yeah, Scooble coming up, just tripping up, as you say, Emoto when he hits that line of scrimmage. So Sholo sprinkling in a few runs here and there, but really not doing much in, in terms of being able to generate uh, much of a ground game tonight. Well, it doesn't help that Willie Wyatt is standing over here. Uh, the docks are checking on him as Reisdorf going to fake to Emoto this time, looking to pass, looks over the middle, throws, and it is almost intercepted. Making a great play on the ball was Kel Calgonis. He almost came up with it, but knocks it down incomplete. Well, he's able, Calgonis able to cut up underneath once he sees that pass come out. Cuts underneath the receiver, has to lunge to get his hands on it, but that was kind of close to almost being picked off by Havasu. So we got a timeout. Timeout on the field, Lake Havasu. They want to talk over this big fourth down play. We will step away. You're listening to Hatch Motor Company's presentation of high school football on iTalk 106.7 and on the web at italk1067.com. Are you a business owner that enjoys watching local sports? Would helping the local youth spark your interest? Then you do not want to miss this opportunity. White Mountain Youth Productions brings you local sports produced by local high school students. Your tax-deductible sponsorship will keep us up and running and provide you with advertisement for your business. Call Sholo TV today to help your local high school students get experience while your business gets attention. Call 928-532-4160. Welcome back to Sholo High School. Quarterfinals of the Division IV State Football Championships here on iTalk, presented by Hatch Motor Company. It's in Sholo and Snowflake, simply the best in sales and service as Lake Havasu wanted to call a timeout, go over all the options as they face as the Cougars face a fourth down and six at the Lake Havasu 25-yard line. Reisdorf again goes with the empty backfield, trips right, two to the left. Here comes the blitz. Reisdorf looking to throw, looking to throw, has a man open, it's complete. Looks like it's Fagoti. And he has the Horn Auto Center first down to the 12-yard line. Huge play, a pickup of 13 yards for the Cougars, first and 10. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think that's uh, the, the person making the reception out there was Ethan Walker. It looks like number four. Okay, my bad. Nick Reedhead, number eight. But regardless, that's a tight window for Rhett Reisdorf to be able to throw in. And as you say, Mike, they had full blitz on, so the pressure was coming, and he's able to just thread the needle on that pass for the first down. Reisdorf on first down, rolling right, looking to throw, dumps it off to Brewer inside the 10, tackled at the 5. And Calgonis, I believe, had to come up. No, excuse me. Number that eight. is Ky Kylan Conan had to come up to make the tackle for Lake Havasu, but an 8-yard, 9-yard pickup on that first down, bring up second down and one. So Sholo so far successful and just chipping away with their passing game primarily here, just moving the ball down the field and they obviously would love to get a touchdown here to at least tie this thing up going in at halftime. 3.05 to go, second quarter. Cougars taking time off the clock as they send a trips left formation 
Two to the right. That's Brewer and Clark. Reisdorf in the shotgun. And timeout. Again, Lake Havasu is going to take it as they're trying to they're going to try to save some time on the clock perhaps for a, uh, for a I think final they drive. Have some personnel issues. You can hear the coaches or see the coaches at least on the sideline kind of barking at each other about who they have out on the field. But regardless, Havasu does take a timeout here. And we do have an update on the uh, number one seed versus number eight seed. Northwest Christian is up 27 to zero. The number one seed could fall here tonight. And that game is at Yuma Catholic, of course, you know, with Yuma being the number one seed. So a very surprising score indeed. And Willie Wyatt back into the ball game for the Cougars that the docs were working on him, but nothing too major, obviously. Well, I couldn't really tell from up here. He, they did have him on the uh, on the table there, and it looked like maybe his knee or ankle. They were just uh, they were just retaping the brace on his knee. It looks like kind of okay. sturdy things up a bit as he is now in but the ball game. But he still has a noticeable lip as he comes out of the huddle here. Big backfield for the Cougars. Three in the backfield along with Reisdorf in the pistol. Take the snap. Give to the deep man. That's a moto. He gets through the line of scrimmage into the end zone. Touchdown. Black Diamond Auto Glass touchdown for the Cougars. From five yards out, a moto gets the call and he answers as the Cougars a point after from tying this one up. 247 left on the clock, so time for Lake Havasu. But the Cougars desperately wanted to go into the locker room at least tied in this one. As Gardner on for the point after try. The snap, the hold, the kick is up. It looks good. It is good. 14 to 14, our score. We have a good one for you here. The Cougars. Probably not too excited about back-to-back -back weeks of <laughs> tight games, but games. as long as they can end up on top, they'll take it. Let's go down to the sideline, check in with our sideline reporter, Brandon Todd. He's got an update on Willie Wyatt. Talk to uh, the head trainer, Doc Fawcett. He said, uh, and this is another fancy word that I have no idea what it means, a contusion mm -hmm. on the lower leg, which I believe is what, just a, a bruise? A bruise. Yeah, just, just a, a bruise. bruise. He said he got leg whipped uh, on his uh, lower leg. So just a contusion. All right, thank you very much, Brandon. As Cougars, for the second time tonight, get set for the Northland Pioneer College kickoff. When it comes time to kick off your college education, choose the college with the lowest tuition in Arizona. Don't forget to stay tuned for the halftime show, Sunrise Park Resort halftime show. We'll have a look inside the numbers from the first half, hopefully have some scoring updates from the other quarterfinal games around the state. Give our thoughts about... Uh, what we might expect for the second half as the ball's teed up at the 40. Certainly the Cougars not uh, not beyond them to onside kick it right here. Looks like the Knights have some hands people up on that at the 50 yard line. But Gardner does kick it deep. End over end kick taken at the 10. And room up the middle for Cal Gold. No, excuse me, that's number one. And he's out to the 35 and finally tackled there. Good return for Jake McAndrew. The five foot six, 150 pound senior getting a chance to return and he, they'll have it at the 37 yard line. Dallin Tenney, number 74 for the Cougars coming across and making the big hit there to get the tackle. Uh, after, you know, after McAndrew found some space behind that initial surge line. But uh, good job by Dallin Tenney to wrap him up there and make the tackle. But regardless, Havasu, fairly long field here, at starting their drive at the 37 with just 240 left. And one half timeout. Time. So Warner will go in the shotgun, back to either side of him. Two receivers left, one to the right. Handoff, Calgonis at the 40, tackled there, pick up a three. Clock will run. Bring up second down and seven. And again, good job up front by those Cougars just sliding down the line of scrimmage at the point of attack and able to find, you know, find the runner just right at the line of scrimmage and wrap him up to limit his gain. Calgonis having a pretty good game, especially that first quarter, knocking off some big runs for Havasu. 
but uh, Sholo making some decent adjustments here in the second quarter and limiting him much more. Two receivers left, one to the right for Warner in the shotgun. Take the snap, give to Calgonis again, trying up the middle, not much doing there. Emoto and Wyatt in there on the tackle for the Cougars, and the Cougars are going to call a timeout. They're, they're thinking, they're, they're, they think Lake Habs is just going to try to run it out. They'll take the time and see if they can't get into the end zone. And we will keep it here. Remind you to stay tuned for the Sunrise Park Resort halftime show. Sunrise Park Resort might be starting to get cold enough here soon where they can start making some snow. Their, their target is to open in eight days. Right before Thanksgiving, of course, or right around the Thanksgiving break when a lot of well, families are up for the holidays. And we've had a few storms that have, that have given them a little something to work with. Also want to thank Brown and Russo Insurance for sponsoring tonight's contest. For all your insurance needs, auto, home, or business, visit the nearest Brown and Russo Insurance Agency with four locations in Sholo, Pine Top, Springerville, and Tempe. Also want to thank Subway for sponsoring tonight's contest. That's Subway, eat fresh. Also, Octopus Car Wash, Beeler Orthodontics, Horn Auto Center, Sunrise Park Resort, Ace Hardware, Black Diamond Auto Glass, Dini for Lake Havasu. Uh, absolutely back breaking. They're able there. That's a big play for Sholo, obviously. Third and six. If they can stop them here, they get a chance to get the ball back and taking a shot at the end zone. But Havasu not being able to execute that play that otherwise would have put them in good field position. Just a backbreaker for them offensively. Coach Thompson for Lake Havasu out on the field talking about what, you know, trying to get an answer because they've been called for quite a few of those as well. And it's always this line judge on the near sideline here who sees something he doesn't like as Kogonis is also there at with the white hat trying to figure out what's going on. And a lot of, lot of talking with the officials, a lot of confusion as the line judge is trying to, to explain to them what the problem is. And they're, it sounds like they're really kind of making it letter of the law thing here. Where yeah. Well, we saw earlier Coach Reisdorf go out and talk to the referee about their interpretation of some of these penalties. And now it's the Havasu coaches turn, C Coach Thompson coming out and also trying to figure out what is going on with their sets to generate all these penalties. Well, and that's a big play because that was a 25-yard pickup for Lake Havasu, and instead it'll come back to the 35-yard line and set up a third down and 11 for Lake Havasu. Louis Gonzalez had it the completion, but he will stay in the ball game. Trips to the to the left, single receiver to the right. Warner going to stay in the shotgun. As looking, and they have a man. It's complete at the 40. Trying to get free at the 45, spun forward by Reedhead at the 49-yard line. And a Horn Auto Center first down. They needed 11. They picked up 12. And excuse me, that's filling him on the tackle. Well, Godi had a shot at him but couldn't bring him down. Yeah, I was going to say, Mike, you know, we could see from that Havasu's trip set that uh, Sholo didn't have enough Defenders def on this side, defensive huh? backs out on this side. And it just opened up that pass for the first down. So Means picks up the first down. There's the, fate, the handoff, and Calgonis has to go really wide and makes another man miss in the backfield. Picks up three yards and is taken out of bounds finally. No, they're going to they're gonna run the clock here. Looked like he had gotten out of bounds as he was still on his feet, but they're going to say run the clock into Cougar territory at the 49-yard line, second down and seven, minute 10 to go. And that's getting Quinton Clark, who comes up quickly from his corner position to try to get Calgonis in the backfield. But Calgonis, you know, he's quick, he's fast. He's able to beat out that your pursuit angle. He ran by about Clark. 30 yards <laughs> he to, did. to pick up three or But two. it could have been a lot worse. He could have lost a ton had uh, Clark been able to make that tackle. Second down and eight. Warner stays in the shotgun. Give to Calgonis again. Hit in the backfield and drop this time. Loss of one on the play. Jamie Webb. Wow, they're not even going to give him forward progress to there. It looked like he had gotten well past the line of scrimmage. Webb on the tackle for the Cougars. Going to set up a third down and nine. 30, third, so excuse me, third down and 10. Lake Havasu will take their final timeout with 30 seconds to go. 
and try to try to see what they can get going here. They have two shots to pick up a first down. Well, a great play by Jamie Webb. We've called his number several times tonight. He's working on that outside linebacker position. That time they do the quick pitch to Calgonis that earlier in the game, you know, Calgonis was able to beat that edge out there and run up field, but uh, Webb that time shutting him down in the backfield, just doing great work for the Cougars tonight defensively. Well, we don't have the official temperature for tonight's contest, but lots of orange glows out there in the stands as heaters have been brought. Not a big contingency from Lake Havasu as far as their crowd. Uh, they, they're, they're huddling for warmth over there, though. We talked to Coach Thompson briefly about the, the weather. He talked about wearing shorts for, he's worn shorts for X amount of games, but he, he has never come up here in November. Yeah, although he did admit to having heat packs stuffed up <laughs> underneath his uh, his hoodie, yes. so he's not he hasn't lost all of his nerve endings apparently. So after the timeout, once again third and ten. Cougars do have a timeout left as the Knights send it, send three receivers to the left, one to the right. Warner takes the snap, looking to pass. It's a screen. Calgonis at midfield. He's loose at the forty. Has enough for the first down and is tackled big. It's a big hit on the sideline Quentin of Calgonis. Clark. You could see him flip out of bounds after that hit with the ball popping up. Of course, it's not a fumble because he is out of bounds, but he is not getting up. That's and a big hit. I think it was Quinton Clark that it might was have Quentin put that Clark. on. And Calgonis does have enough for the Horn Island Center first down at the 35-yard line, but he may have paid a, a big price, and Lake Havasu may have as well. Well, he's a tough runner. He doesn't back down from anyone. We've seen him lower his shoulder several times tonight and take tacklers on. That time, though, with that flip, you know, it looked like he got hit kind of mid-thigh area. Clock is stopped with 23 seconds. And the Knights have 35 yards to go. Something we should point out here, Punt, is their kicker, Josh Crabtree, has a huge leg. Yes, it, uh, his points after uh, both touchdowns, as you said, that first one looked like it might have gone out to the old stadium over the fence, but uh, certainly to consider about Havasu here and the options they would have offensively uh, with, with so little time left here on the clock. Working on the lower body of Calgonis, he's, he's moving, he's talking, head coach Thompson they may not have brought, brought, brought any kind of medical staff, so the Sholo Cougar medical staff is making their way across the field to uh, check in on Calgonis. As both teams are huddling with their coaches now. Nope, <laughs> the, the Sholo Cougar medical staff is... They're going to turn around and come back. <laughs> come so it back. could be, you know, it's, we're, we're not going to speculate, certainly, but could have the air knocked out of them. That could have been an option or just got hit in the groin area, which is never a fun thing, but... Um, just take some time to recover. Yeah, but uh, the coaches are there talking to him, as you say, as he's laying on the, just outside the sideline near the bench for the Havasu Knights. And, no until, and he's not on the field, so I'm not sure why they're stopping play right here. Maybe he's, maybe he's close enough to see... Uh, but nonetheless, the Knights will have it first and 10 at the 35-yard line with 23 seconds. So time for three or four plays still. They have no timeouts left, so they're going to have to get out of bounds or obviously the stop.
In today's challenging economy, having a college education is a must. Northland Pioneer College is here to help you prepare for your future. NPC is committed to providing you with the highest quality education with the lowest tuition cost in the state. We offer a variety of advanced learning classes to prepare you for a transfer or associate's degree, personal interest education, or earning your GED. Contact an academic advisor for more information. Go online at npc.edu here from Sholo High School. Our score, 14 to 14. Lake Havasu and Sholo all tied up in the quarterfinals of the Division IV State Football Championships. It's been a fun one. And we're also gonna t check back in with the studio and uh, check in with Royce King Cannon. He's got scores from around the state in uh, both Division IV and I believe Div Division V. All over the state he's got scores. Let's go back and check in with Royce. Royce? Hey, Mike, hey, we've got uh, some scores from around Division 4 and 5 today. Push Ridge and River Valley in the third quarter. They're still tied at zero. Number one, Yuma Catholic is being beat by number eight, Northwest Christian, 27 to zero. At the half, it's number four, Australia Foothills over number five, Snowflake, seven to six. The last score I got from Round Valley and Tempe Prep shows Tempe Prep up seven to six over Round Valley. Joy Christian, 40 Bisbee 22, and Benson 28, Miami 0. We still have no scores from Round Valley so far, but we'll get those to you as soon as we do. Back to you, Mike. Thank you very much, uh, Royce, for that scoring update. So uh, this is not the only close game right. in Division Four football. We have a tie score, River Valley push Ridge at 0, and Snowflake trailing Australia Foothills 6-7 to seven at the half. Well, you know, i got to admit, that one doesn't surprise me as much, you know, after seeing... Australia Foothills defeat the Sholo Cougar team and I think it was the first round of the playoffs last year so Australia definitely up and coming program so for them to be battling with Snowflake and of course that game being played at Australia Foothills not that big of a surprise the big surprise of all those games certainly Yuma Catholic with the goose egg at halftime and putting up allowing Northwest Christian to put up 27 against them uh, that score I got to tell you I was not expecting at all. Yuma yeah, Catholic, yeah. Uh, you know, they're not necessarily a power, but they played very consistent football all year long, and for them to go in at halftime down 27-0, something clearly going on defensively with that club. Well, obviously a lot of parity in Division IV. Uh, you know, you got a lot of these teams who don't play each other, and so you, you just, right. you're just basing it off what Max Preps has determined as his strength of schedule and what wins are worth, and so... Uh, we get, to see, we get to see the result of that here in the playoffs. Right, but in the case of Northwest Christian and Yuma Catholic, yeah, as you had mentioned, <laughs> they are in the same, and they even played earlier this year with Yuma Catholic coming out ahead. So clearly Northwest Christian doing a great job of preparing themselves for this football game tonight. All right, well, let's go down to our sideline reporter, Brandon Todd. He has a little bit of an update on the star running back for Lake Havasu Knights, uh, Jacob Kil uh, Kilgonis. Mike, I wish I had more for you. I talked to the head coach, Thompson. I said, hey, can you give me a, 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 an update on Calgonis? He said, Brandon, you know, we really don't know. He said, the trainer's going to take a look at him during halftime. He said he took a big hit over there on the sidelines, but it's a good physical game. That's football. It was a clean hit. He said, we don't really know, but we saw him get carted off uh, shortly after the, uh, the halftime started. So he got carted off, not walking. Uh, speculation is it probably doesn't look good, Mike. All right, thank you very much, Brandon, and that is going to be a big blow for Lake Habits. We will discuss that and more uh, a little bit later on. Uh, first, though, let's go look at uh, the scoring drives, the scoring recap from that first half with Punt Cooley. Punt? Okay, well, thanks, Mike. And, and it started, of course, in the first quarter, Sholo's first possession, actually, a 14-yard touchdown pass from Reisdorf to Quinton Clark to put seven 7-0 lead up early, and then at Lake Havasu with their first possession of the football game answering with a lengthy drive. And, and as we mentioned, Jacob Calgonas, their star running back, running a 23-yard touchdown run in that first quarter to bring the score to 7-7. Seven to seven. Then in the second quarter with uh, just over 10 minutes left, um, Lake Havasu on, the, I think it was that, Third, long third down play. Anyway, they do that halfback pass play, 45-yard touchdown pass from uh, Calgonis to Cole Meals to, to allow Lake Havasu to go up for the first time in the football game, 14-7. to seven. Sholo then late in the second quarter answering with that long drive 
after the change in downs and a forty and a five yard um, or out on downs, I should say, for Sholo to pick up the possession, and then they drive for a five yard touchdown round by Chris Amoto to tie the score up here at halftime, 14-14. On that very last drive, Lake Havasu able to get down into the around the 20-yard line of Sholo, and they did attempt that field goal, 32-yard field goal, which was missed. But, uh, you know, a very hard-fought football game, very physical football game uh, so far in the first half. A lot of penalties on both sides uh, on the offensive side for Sholo and Havasu. Havasu certainly more than Sholo, but I'm sure that's one thing that both coaches will be talking to their teams about at halftime is, you know, the, the penalties. In the case of as Sholo, of course, too, we heard Coach Reisdorf, you know, the two fumble turnovers are something he definitely wants to fix and actually move into Sholo territory, but now having to bring it all back because of a penalty. We had a hole on the backside. Repeat second down. <laughs> Ten yard penalty from the spot, and we've seen this happen before to Lake Havasu, where they're faced with a second and like 50. They had second and one, and now with two straight penalties up to about 30 yards and penalties, it's okay, second and 40. I might have exaggerated a bit, but still. <laughs> Trips left. Once again, Warner's in the shotgun. Take the snap. He's looking to pass, looking over the middle, throws the screen, just throws it out of bounds. Wisely, kind of intended for Gonzalez, but let that one fly as a defender is right there. And he's getting rid of that ball quickly, Mike, as you say, because of the great rush by Stavros Castillo just coming right up the middle from his defensive tackle position, able to rip through that block and put pressure on, on Walker quickly. I'm sorry, Warner. And, and uh, Warner smartly just throwing that ball away. Well, obviously, coaching staff without Calgonis has gone, decided to go to the air, but the penalties have gone, made them go the other way. Once again, trips left to the wide side of the field. Warner's in the shotgun. Takes a snap. Rolling left. Here comes Bell unblocked. They do pick him up as the pass is over, and it is not... Well, not they're gonna say almost intercepted. No, it was intercepted. No, Pick they're they're saying incomplete. He was out of bounds. Well, I meant he he caught the oh, ball. Yeah. He but did catch it. He but he did step out, and that would be uh, Fagoti out there on the corner. He he's picked off two out of bounds, yep. and and two others he, he in dropped. Bounds, he could, he <laughs> right, didn't come up with so <clears throat> tough night there for Fagoti as the Knights will be forced to punt. They had something going on their first drive, but again, penalties have been their nemesis here tonight as Quentin Clark stands at his own 45-yard line. The snap, the punt is away. It's a low wobbler, takes a Lake Havasu bounce, and will go out of bounds at the 41-yard line. So good field position for the Cougars to start their first drive of the second half. And again, decent starting field position for the Cougars here starting at their own 41 on this drive. <laughs> 